Rise up on your feet now as you sing. I was lost, but Jesus found me. Found the sheep that went astray. But it's loving, but it's love. But it's loving, and I'm surrounded with me back. To his foot. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Righteousness, but by his grace alone, it's done by works of righteousness, but by his grace alone, it's done by works of righteousness, but by his grace alone, oh, I am complete. Oh, yes, yeah, complete. Oh, yes, hallelujah. Oh, yes, oh, yes, hallelujah. Send that fire, the Holy Ghost fire. Send the fire. Send the fire. Send the fire, Holy Ghost. Send the fire. That holy God, fire burning in my soul. Holy Ghost and fire, holy Ghost and fire, thank you, cause of fire. Fire burning in my, fire burning in my soul. Fire burning in my soul. Holy Ghost and fire. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Your hand, your, 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 your. Ah, Lord God, that has made the heavens and the earth by Thy great power. Ah, Lord God, that has made the heavens and the earth by the outstretch. Nothing is too difficult for Thee. Nothing is too difficult for Thee. Nothing is too difficult for thee, great and mighty God, great counsel, mighty indeed, mighty indeed, nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing, nothing is too difficult for thee, behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh, 
Sing it again. Behold, oh, 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 I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything? Is there anything to ask for you? Is there anything? Anything? Anything to ask for you? Is there anything? Is there anything to add? John, 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 John. The fullness of the body dwelleth in the Lord. The fullness of the golden bodily dwelleth in the Lord. The fullness of the golden bodily dwelleth in the Lord. Oh, I am complete. Oh, yes, complete. Oh. Hallelujah. Complete, complete, complete healing. Hallelujah. Complete healing. Say this loud and clear, beloved, and declare this louder than anyone around you. Don't negotiate these three prayers. I want you to pray now. Because it will certainly open gates to many people this week. Can you shout this louder than anyone around you? Thou power of delayed blessings. In the name of Jesus. Masepok hatalakaya boshanda. Aha! In Jesus' name we pray. That's wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. Say, every discouraging power I disgrace you can I hear the sister shouting this loud and clear Mm -hmm. sisters is that the loudest you can say let the brothers roar like thunder everybody together now In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and declare it loud and clear. Aha. Aha. In Jesus name we pray. Now, as loud as a voice can carry you, and after the order of blind Bartimaeus, you will cry out loud like this Oh God, Allah, and show me favor in the name of Jesus. Favor, favor, favor. Sandaka, Ribokoya Boshende Rabokonte. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for a time like this. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Everyone gathered here this morning, show them uncommon favor, give them uncommon testimonies. Reveal to them unusual secrets that will move their destiny forward. 
anyone in the service here this morning that the enemy has stolen from you. Hear the word of the Lord. Repossess your possession. 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 In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. A louder amen. Let's have a seat. God bless you. Listen to me very carefully this morning. We're speaking on what I call the company you keep. The company you keep. The company you keep. Sisters, what did I say? Brothers, what did I say? Let's read four scriptures very quickly. I want to read those four scriptures to you. Those four scriptures are sermons by themselves. Then I will now do an analysis of those four scriptures. The company you keep. In Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20. The company you keep. Proverbs 13, 20. Proverbs 13, 20 says, He that walketh with wise men shall be wise. But a companion of fools shall be destroyed. That is, the company you keep can destroy you. But he that walketh with the wise is in a good company, the person shall be wise. Have you found that scripture? Proverbs 13, 20. Can you shout it loud and clear? Let me hear you read. Keep that scripture in your heart. In Proverbs, the same Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 27, verse 19. Proverbs 27, 19. I will find out one too. Can you read it? Let me hear you. Can you read it again? That is like a mirror that reflects a man's face. Your real identity is shown by the kind of people you keep. That's what it's telling you. That's what it's telling you there. Just as a mirror reflects a man's face. Your true identity is the kind of friend you keep. That's what he's trying to tell you in Proverbs 27, 19. Now in 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 5. For the destiny of Saul to be fulfilled, he had to join a company. In 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 5. 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 5. Samuel told Saul, after that thou shalt come to the hill of God, where is the garrison of the Philistines, and shall come to pass, when thou art come thither to that city, that thou shalt meet a company of prophets coming down. A company of prophets coming down. From the high place with a psaltery and a tablet, and a pipe and a harp before them, and they shall prophesy. Then verse 6. And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with that company, with them. And then thou shalt be turned into another man. Your company decides whether you'll be turned to another man or not. Your company decides so many things for you. Now in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 33. 1 Corinthians 15, 33. That one nailed everything in the head very clearly. First Corinthians 15 33. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Evil communication corrupt good manners. So we've read four scriptures. Proverbs 13 20. He that walketh with the wise shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Proverbs 27, 19. 
says, just like a mirror reflects, a, a mirror may reflect a man's face. But it, his true identity is known by his, the kind of friends he keeps. First Sabbath 10 5 tells us the prophecy on the destiny of Saul that you will join a company of the prophets. Then, because you join that company, you shall prophesy with them, then you shall become another man. I, did I see somebody here this morning? You will become another man, another woman, and your destiny shall move forward. Then, First Corinthians 15 33 says, evil communication corrupts good manners. Now, let's now tie those four scriptures together. As you listen to me very carefully now, it has been well said, I show me your friend and I will tell you the kind of person you are. As a matter of necessity, if you partner with dogs, you will soon learn how to bark. If you partner with pigs, you will soon learn how to litter a place, even though the place was clean when it was handed over to you. If you partner with eagles, you will soon learn how to fly high. He that walketh with the wise shall be wise. But a companion of fools shall be destroyed. The hard fact about life that many of us don't realize is that you become like those you closely associate with, either for good or for bad. Many major sorrow many major setbacks and I say this with all Holy Ghost sincerity many major sorrows, major setbacks spring out of relationship with wrong people out of relationship with wrong people the company you keep will decide your destiny the company you keep will decide your destiny Many of us here this morning, listen to me well, beloved. You need to break free from a particular company that has held you down. Because in life, there are some people, the less you associate with them, the more your life will improve. There are some people, the more you associate with them, the more your life will go down. This is a very serious matter. If a fornicator is not a nuisance to you, then it is a sign that you are a fornicator yourself. If a liar, it's not a nuisance to you. It is a sign that you are a liar yourself. If a loafer, somebody who doesn't want to do anything, doesn't want to do anything, that person doesn't want to do anything. If that person is not a nuisance to you, then you are a loafer yourself. If a drunkard is not a nuisance to you, then you are a drunkard yourself. If a womanizer or somebody who practices immorality is not a nuisance to you, your best friend is a womanizer. Although you say you have only one wife, which it shows, it shows that you are a womanizer too. If a smoker is not a nuisance to you, then although you don't put a stick in your mouth, you are a smoker yourself. People who want to fulfill their destiny are very impatient with negative thinking and negative acting people. Show me your friends, they say. And I will tell you the kind of person you are. A woman noticed that her friend was just making money, making money, getting rich, buying cars. This was a woman who was selling palm oil before and was very poor. All of a sudden, she stopped selling palm oil. She began to buy cars. She began to build houses. Her friend did not know what she did. So this woman was telling her friend, my friend, show me the way. Show me the way. That her friend didn't want to tell her anything. But as she put pressure, pressure on her, show me the way, you are, you are prospering, you are making money, I too want to make money, show me the way. Our friend said, okay, I will take you to one Baba somewhere. And they went to this Baba. And the Baba said, are you ready to do what your friend did before she prospered? She said, yes. She didn't ask what she did. She said, yes. The man said, okay, no problem. Swallow this, swallow this, take this home, put it in the food, give it to all the children to eat, give it to your husband to eat. Then come back in two weeks now. Say, thank you, sir. She went through with these things. And immediately it was two weeks. Her first son took ill and began to roll on the floor. Blah, blah. She, he began to cry. Mommy, mommy, help me. This and that and that and that and that. So the first person she called was her friend. Say, look, 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 look. Look what's happening. Look, look what's happened to. Look what's happened. 
And the friend said, what happened? I said, is this boy? He's rolling on the floor. And the way he's doing, I'm uncomfortable. Ah, the friend said, but uh, Baba told you that are you ready to do what I did? I said, ah, what did you do? I said, didn't you know that uh, 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 he lost a first son? Before this money came, ah, so is that the kind of money? So, I don't want to. Oh, hey, I don't want. I don't want. Take me back there. Take me back there. She carried her son, ran to the Baba's house. Say, Baba, I'm not doing it again. I'm not doing it again. You take the money. I don't want money. Take money. The company you keep can make and unmake you. Failure wants your company, but you do not have. To to go into the company of failure. You don't have to let the failure enter through the door into you. The truth is that you become like those you associate with. Then as you grow in the Lord, as you grow in your life, your associations will change according to your maturity. So you may have friends who will not want you to move forward. You may have friends who want you to stay where they are. You may have friends who cannot help you to climb, but they want you to crawl. You could have friends who will stretch your vision and choke your dream. But the bottom line is this, and that's the truth. Any friend you have that does not increase you will eventually decrease you. You have to now insulate yourself from negative people with negative ideas. Is that when you depart from me today, you will get to the hill of the Lord. And there you will see a garrison of, of the prophets. You find them singing and dancing, and they will be prophesying. And you shall join that company, and you shall prophesy with them, and you shall become another man. Any company that you have joined now that is assigned to pull your life down, I separate you from them. 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 In the name of Jesus. How you say, but we have been, we've known each other since secondary school. The question is, since you knew the person from secondary school, what value has he added to your destiny? One of the saddest days in my life. That day I left home very happy. Because they were doing a student reunion of my former secondary school. Our old class. I was looking forward to going there. I was looking forward to people calling themselves the nicknames we used to call them. My own nickname was Omolopa. My father was a policeman. (laughs) So we all had nicknames like that. I was so much looking forward to it. When we arrived at that meeting. By the time I spent five minutes, I became unhappy. I could see that basically all of them had remained the, as they were when we were in school. Those who were running after girlfriends then now have many wives. Those who were telling lies then, they are now for one night. The only few people who had changed here were those who met Christ. The, there's one boy in our class, we call him Anukola Pokuti because he sings like a fella, he dances like a fella. By the time he came, he was a wreck. He must have had, he must have HIV the way I saw him. You cannot continue a relationship because it has started a long time ago when it is not adding value to your destiny. And listen to me, and listen to me well. It is better to be alone than to be in the wrong company. A single conversation with the right kind of person can be more valuable to your life than years of study. Look carefully at your closest associations now. It is an indication of the direction you are heading to. This is a serious matter. There are men here in this meeting this morning. Your closest friends are those who go to this ten, the Yoruba Tennis Club, that club, this club, this club, all kinds of places where all kinds of things take place at night. Those are your closest friends. You, came to be, you claim to be a Christian. You are not a Christian. You are an idol worshiper. That is the truth. You need to repent. Break free from that company. Your best friends are lodge members. Your best friends are idol worshippers. Your best friends are polygamists. Something is wrong with you. You need a change. 
Your best friends are those who go to campus, gather small, small campus, get the ages of your daughter, and you come them in one guest house. Something is wrong with you because you're in the bad company. Your best friends are those who drink and drink and drink in parties. Your best friend, they are what you call cockroach friends, nocturnal friends. They always operate at night. Then you need to break free. If you must make heaven, and if you must pursue your destiny. But on the other side, no road is too long when you are in the right company. But you will get the worst of the bargain if you are exchanging ideas with the wrong persons. There are some people, when you are with them, the time you spend with them is an investment. But there are some people, the time you spend with them is a wasted time. Wasted time. I say, my fiance, it's my she, it's my, it's my fiance, I want, to, I want to marry. But any time you are in his presence, no Bible study, no prayer, nothing. It's kissing, petting, kissing, petting. That's what you do for hours. No Bible study, no plan about your future. You, have, you, don't, you haven't found the husband yet. What you find is uh, an unfriendly friend. It's natural for people to think that they are strong enough to disallow somebody's habit from rubbing off on them. Some people think that. It's a, it's, it's, it's a faulty thinking. But the reality is that bad behavior rubs off more easily than good behavior. So some friendships are consistently negative And they hold potentially negative consequences for your life. You must break such friendship. Anytime you notice that if you are in the presence of somebody... You don't feel godly. You feel ungodly. You feel lustful. You feel as if you should commit fornication. You feel as if you do evil things. You better run away from that company. It's a destroyer. This is why sometimes, by the time you get to know a person very well, you discover that the person is a total stranger to your destiny. Which company do you keep? What company are you in now? You must make up your mind. That you must break from the company of the chicken. And join the company of the angels. You must break from the company of those who have nowhere to go. And join the company of those who are going somewhere. You must break free from the company of those who are, who are rewriting their family history in a negative way. And join those who are rewriting your family history in a positive way. If your best friend is an unbeliever, then it should be concluded that you are an unbeliever yourself. If something is walking like a duck... Talking like a duck, swimming like a duck, we we'll conclude that we are looking at a duck. Many are like this, and they wonder what happens. One boy was telling his mother, "Say, mommy, you are always criticizing me that I'm going to places you don't like. Uh, you to follow me one day. I used to follow you to church. Follow me to where I go one day." One day, mother said, "Okay, take me there." He took the mother to a film house. When they entered the cinema hall. Mama noticed that the old place was in darkness. Said, my son, this place is dark. Said, yes, yeah, because they want to show the film at the front, the place has to be dark. Mama said, since these people are so comfortable in the darkness, then I conclude, they are, they are what the Bible calls children of darkness. I said, no, no, don't call them children of darkness. They are here to watch film. Okay. After some time, Mama said, okay, can we pray before we start watching the film? I said, no, no, you don't pray in a place like this. This is embarrassing. Mama said, wherever I cannot pray, then I'm in the wrong company. I must go home. Are you see the cinema, Christian? Go there, you want to go and watch it, go and watch it, go and watch a film. Something is wrong somewhere. There are different companies that are available. Let me go through them. If you are in the wrong company, use this money to break free. We don't say don't go and minister to unbelievers so that they can surrender their life to Jesus. We didn't say so. You can minister to them. But you must not join in their iniquity. Light and darkness don't operate together. There is no relationship between the temple of God and Belial. Company number one. Pretenders. The company of pretenders. Two. Exploiters. Perhaps the, company, the kind of friends you have now, they are just exploiting you. It's a bad company. Come to number three. Robbers. They take or borrow things from you. They never return them. It's a bad company. Four. Betrayer. 
They will betray you. You rely so much on them, they betray you at the last minute. Company number five. Promise breakers. They will promise and promise and promise and promise and promise. But they won't keep that promise. Are those your kinds of friends? They have to break free. You must move. Company number six. Cheats. Those will cheat people. Your friends are for one hour. They say, but I'm a less agent. If your friends are thieves, then you are a thief. Seven, gossipers. They talk about this, talk about that, talk about that, talk about that. Your major friends are CNN and BBC friends. You should break free from them. If somebody is gossiping to you about another person, be sure he's going to gossip about you to some other person too. Eight, abusers. They abuse you either physically or verbally or spiritually. Now, we have the competitor's company. When you buy a hat, they want to buy the same hat. They want, you buy shoes, they want to buy that kind of shoes. And you, you, you want, they want to do it. It's a wrong company. Ten, find a copycat. They copycat you. Eleven, manipulators. Are your friends manipulators? You are still continuing with the friendship? Something is wrong somewhere. Twelve. The miserable friends. Miserable. They bring mystery your way. They discourage you. They, they discourage you. They tell you things that will pull you down. Thirteen. Accusers. They will blame you for all their problems. Fourteen. Lazy. Are your closest friends the lazy ones? Who won't do anything with their hands? You need to break free. Fifteen, the envious friends. Envious, they envy you. And you know they are envious of you. But you are still with them. Sixteen, the addicts. You have a friend who takes drugs. Who smokes. Who drinks. But you are still going out. You are not converting the person. And you are claiming he can't convert you. You are playing a dangerous game. 17. The proud, proud friends. 18. You have the know it all. They don't take correction, they know everything. 19. You have the bully, always bullying you, forcing you to do things. Bully. 20. You have the attention seeker. They just want to seek attention anywhere, they want to seek attention. They are sitting beside you. They want attention. 21. The procrastinators. You have a friend like that. Always procrastinating. Always procrastinating. 22. Stingy friends. Stingy. Doesn't give. 23. The chameleon company. They show one face today. Show another face tomorrow. 24. The disloyal company. This is a company you must dissociate yourself from. 25. The party company. This party, that party, all they want to know is there's somebody celebrating birthday, somebody is doing this, somebody is burial, somebody is that. The party all over town. 26. The selfish friends. Very selfish. 27. Parasite. The parasite friend extremely needy and always have to depend on you and they don't want to do anything they want something from you all the time 28 you have the actors dramatists dramatized to confuse you 29 you have the defensive company they don't either accept that they've done something wrong anything they start defending defend, they put up a defense anything 30 you have the pessimistic friend. They are pessimistic. They, are, they, they always look at the dark, dark side of things. 31. The company of failure. You will not join that company in Jesus' name. 32. Unproductive company. You have been moving with them. They have not added anything to your life. 33. The sexual friends. They are only interested in sex. sex. They are not interested in any other thing. All these are evil company to break away from. 34. The liars. 35. 
the demoters. 36. The emptiers. The MTU. 37. The spoilers. 38. Is the wasters. They waste the person's life. They waste the person's destiny and then walk away. 39. The equalizers. They want you to equalize. They want you to be like them. 40. The chicken. Picking worms on the floor. 41. Average. Move with the middle. You stay in the middle. 42. The witchcraft company. That one is the most foolish company on earth. It does not make sense. And it's extreme foolishness for a mother to eat her own children. Who will bury her when she's dead? What kind of dumb, foolish group is that? Uh, drinking people's blood, meeting under the tree, going inside the local tree. Terrible company. 43. The familiar spirit company. Terrible group. Demoters. 44. The cult. 45. Hellfire friends. They know they are going to hellfire. I don't want to drag you along. But then, 46. We have prayer company. 47. Holy Ghost company. 48. We have Bible company. 49. We have destiny company. Your relationship with them moves your destiny forward. And 50, we have excellent company. Those are the ones the Lord wants you to join. The prayer company, the Holy Ghost company, the Bible company, the destiny company, the excellence company. How do I break free from the evil company? Number one, you must be born again. You must be born again. Number two, you must reject counsel from the ungodly. All the counsel from the ungodly, reject it. Three, you must reject counsel from the unproductive. Reject it. Four, you must avoid discussing your problem with somebody who is incapable of bringing solution. We can't bring any solution. We just complicate the matter. I want you to know that it is not everyone who has the right to speak to your life. Five, don't follow anyone who is not going anywhere. There are some people that are not going anywhere. Don't follow them. If you use your car to follow a vehicle that is parked, you remain parked. Next, decide to fortify your life with right friendship. Decide to fortify your life with the right friendship. And finally, learn to let go when it is necessary. Learn to let go when it is necessary. Listen, beloved. There are people who will abandon you and walk away from you at some stage in your life. There are some people who will by themselves separate from you without you quarreling with them. Once you find that somebody does not want to stay with you, the best is to allow them to go. Stop begging them to stay. Stop attaching yourself to somebody who has detached you already. Your destiny is never tied to anybody who has detached himself from you. When you are a prayerful person, you are working with God, and somebody decides to break off, let the person go. That means the person is not joined to you. In the pastoral ministry, we have two kinds of pastors. We have the pastors we call pillars. We have the ones we call scaffold. The scaffold is what you put by the side of a building, like that one over there, to build a place. The pillar will stay, the scaffolds will always go away. The tragedy of the scaffold, the scaffold will have helped you to build the house, but it will now go away. The Bible says, they were not of us. If they were of us, they would not have gone away from us. So if the person is for you, do not just disjoin, join, just cut himself off from you. You must stop putting your eggs under a dead hen. Many of us need to go home and do some serious thinking. Analyze all your friends. Since you have known them, evaluate what they have contributed to your life. Evaluate the half work they have done to you. Evaluate the terrible advices they've given to you that has led you to where you are now. 
Then make up your mind that enough is enough. Your company decides your destiny. Your company decides what God will do with your life. Your company decides whether you are moving forward or moving backward. Your company decides what the Lord will do in your life. When you stay too long in the wrong company, sometimes you block the right company away. This is why we need prayer here this morning. Rise up on your feet now. All eyes closed. But you see, if you are in this meeting this morning, you are even not born again. You have not just surrendered your life to Jesus. You have an opportunity. Do so very quickly now. By raising up your right hand where you are. And say what I'm going to say after me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you now. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Take control of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you say that short prayer with me, immediately we close. Just find a way to the front here. All eyes closed. That songwriter, he says, Dear to be a Daniel. Dear to stand alone. Dare to have a purpose true. Dare to make it known. So many mighty men said so they are falling because they did not join the Daniel's band. The company of Daniel are the company who pray. The company of Daniel are the company who speak to God regularly. The company of Daniel is the company of wisdom. The company of excellence. So many giant men that are walking around through the land and threatening people. See, the reason they are threatening people is because they have not met members of the Daniel's band. I believe there will be somebody here this morning who will say, I'm changing from all this evil company. I want to join the company of God. It is better to be alone than to be in the wrong company. All eyes closed. Bow down your heads. If your best friends are the enemies of God, ask the Lord to forgive you now. Light and darkness, they don't have relationship. Ask him to forgive you now. Before we begin to pray. And very serious prayers this morning. Very serious prayers. Amen. Now, with fire in your voice. With a voice that wants to join the Daniel's band. With a voice that wants to join the band of the prophets. A voice that is tired of being in the band of the spiritually weak. A voice that is tired of being in the company of the powerless. You will shout this as loud as a voice can carry you. This is not a day to joke. Whoever you are, wherever you are, you are in the company. The company may be invisible or or visible. Maybe the company of the powerless, the company of the prayerless, the company of those who are not growing spiritually. The company of those who see no vision, no revelation. The company of those who are deaf and dumb to the things of God. The company of those who don't hear from God. Wherever you are, you are in one company. Visible or invisible. This is why we shout this loud and clear. Company of darkness! Take my destiny! Can I hear you roaring like thunder? I'm sure you can roar louder than that. I still want you to shout it loud and clear. Your time is up. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to declare it. Something must happen. Jesus' name we pray. Say this loud and clear. My divine lion. Wake up! In the name of Jesus. Command your internal lion to wake up. Yes. Wake up, wake up. In 
Jesus name we pray thank you Jesus let us share the grace in fellowship